Hey guys, so in yet another bizarre and confusing move for me and what I normally do on the channel, I got another new toy. Um, so unlike the last few devices that I've been playing with, uh, namely these Amber Nick ones, uh, this was not sent to me for the purpose of a video. I just wanted to make one anyway. This was actually gifted to me by a friend because he thought it was cool and he thought I would think it was cool. So here we are. But anyway, I, uh, I don't know, I guess I, I guess I wanted to do a video anyway. Um, so this is the Hyperkin Retron SQ HD gaming console. Uh, so what this is, this is uh, intended to be, if you haven't heard, apologies if you have, um, I'm sure I'm not the first person to cover this and I'm sure I won't be the last. Uh, you plug this into your HDTV with an HDMI cable you put your, you stick your carts in the in the cart sticky outy bit, and then you can just play your games on the TV. Um, I want to try it out now. Recently, I believe there has been a firmware update that fixes the beta designation of the Game Boy Advance uh, compatibility, or at the very least, makes it playable. Um, but I don't know. I want to play with it. See what happens. So. Not a whole lot on the box. You get the controller, you get the device itself, you get a uh, Type-C cable with an AC adapter, and then the uh, HDMI cable you need to plug it in. Um, and that is a boot. It, that is not a knife. I need a knife. Here we are. The controller looks to be based off of the Super Nintendo controller, but it is their own brand. Excuse me while I open that up. You got the console itself that I can't even take out of the box. Console, quote unquote. When we get this cute little card, play well. Thank you for your purchase and support. Um, I will do none of that. I will not follow them. I don't know why people do that. Alright, inside the larger box we have two smaller boxes, presumably the controller and then the AC adapter. Let's see what kind of AC adapter we got. Oh, it's a cute little tiny boy. I'm not going to use it. I'm not even going to bother opening it. Uh, you can see through the plastic, it is a 5 volt, 1 amp adapter. Weak sauce. I'm just going to throw it back in the bag. It is USB A to USB C. Again, I'm not going to use that. I have enough power adapters laying around. I'm just going to throw that back in the box and forget about it. Unless for some reason I need it, in which case it is there. This, on the other hand, I believe I shall need. And uh, forgive me if I make dumb mistakes or assumptions or test things that have already been proven not to work because I have consumed just about zero media on this thing, aside from the fact that I know Game Boy Advance compatibility is not the greatest, out of the box at least. Uh, so yeah, just generic HDMI, HDMI, full-size cable, again, that's going in the box. And then the controller, which has a 10-foot USB cable, which is, what, approximately like 3 meters? A little over 3 meters? Um, USB on the end. Nothing fancy. As far as the buttons go, I mean, it feels fantastic. It's a... I would call it a quality controller. Um, at least on first glance. I gotta actually play something to see See how it plays. I will say it is interesting that they made a custom controller for this unit and they gave it a Y and an X button because no Game Boy uses Y and X. Um, now if I recall correctly these are like Turbo B and Turbo A buttons which I mean all right at least as a function just kind of weird. Uh, and then the console itself looks pretty simple. I do actually dig this color. 
I'm good with that. You get big old buttons. This one is latching. This one is momentary. Plug your controller in. HDMI power. You can set your screen aspect ratio 16 to 9 or 4 to 3 which hopefully is the output of the video signal itself and not the game signal because no Game Boy game was ever that uh, ratio. And then the cart slot itself looks to be like those generic uh, Game Boy Advance SP cart slots. So it should take Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, no problem. Um, and at this point, I want to try it out, but I do have to pause for just a moment to actually get this thing hooked up and to go get some carts to plug in. Uh, oh, before I do that though, there is an included memory card, a whopping 512 megabytes on a generic SD card. I believe this is for the firmware, but also for storing the games. But Mako, if it has a card slot, why does it need storage for the games? Let me tell you why. So this thing, while it does interface with your physical cartridges, they are technically not needed um, because how this functions is you plug your card in, it's going to then download your cart to the storage and then run it off of that. Uh, the interface for the Retron to the cart itself is just not fast enough to run it real time. So it has to take a few minutes the first time you plug it in to download all the data. Then it can load it all into memory off of the cache storage here, the micro SD, and then you can play. So it's not quite the same thing as getting like a Game Boy Consoleizer or a Game Boy Player. But if the emulation is good enough, Aside from the extra weight when you plug it in, the difference should be largely imperceptible. Uh, but give me just a sec here. I gotta get this set up. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. I'm back and I think we're good. My capture card is working. I just have to start recording because I totally forgot. It is not recording. Oh, there it goes. Just kidding. Let me go ahead and plug this in. Oh, for shame, they put the USB port upside down. Start with a uh, classic. A simple, simple classic. Ugh. Need HDMI. And I'll, I'll go ahead and overlay the footage of this thing. Um, oh yeah, power. So let, let's actually try something. I'm going to plug in a USB PD adapter on a USB-C host. So good news is that it appears to draw 5 volts. It's not switched on, but the fact that it's activated my power supply means it should be working. Let me... Oh, well if that works, the other one's gonna work. So we'll just use this one for now. And uh, here goes nothing. Get a little blue light absolutely nothing on the screen. It's cool. I'm loving it. Uh, oh, there it goes. Takes a bit. Hyperkin logo. It's showing a loading screen, which I'm guessing is because it's dumping the game. Just gotta wait for it. Hyperkin logo again, it looks like it just reset, and we're into the game. So it is currently set to 16 to 9, um, I think. If we flip that switch, yeah, it flips it to 4 to 3. Um, you'll have to forgive me, I'm playing through the preview window, which... Ugh, doesn't look that good. I also don't know if I have sound. Do I have sound? I think I have to fuss about with uh, OBS to get sound working. I'm gonna assume there's sound. I'll have to check the video. But, uh, oops. 
Well, the nice thing is it, it does dump pretty quickly and it did grab my save. I do see some frame dropping uh, or stuttering. I'm not sure. It's hard to say if it's the emulation, um, the output on this device, my capture card, my screen, OBS, any one of those combos. I'd have to plug this thing into a TV to take some of that out of the picture. Let me go get in a battle over here and find out. Yeah, the controller is great. I'm very pleased with it. Well, let's do slam. Come on, win slam. You're welcome to. So here's something I'm actually interested in, and um, if I had read the instruction booklet or any of the documentation for this thing, I would probably already know the answer to this. But I am curious if it does any write back of the uh, saves. Reset literally just resets the device. Okay. Oh, I, well, I guess we'll find out if it, if it wrote back. I would have thought it would cache the ROM, so I didn't have to keep doing that. Keep dumping. Yeah, neat. My save is preserved. Let me power this thing off. And let's just see if it put the save on the cart. I don't see why it wouldn't, but, you know, I gotta know. No, it did not. So, once, once you put your cart in this thing and start playing, your save is on the, on this device itself, not on the cart. I am fairly confident that there's a way around that, but... Um, we'll worry about that later. Uh, next up, let's just try something nice and simple. Game Boy Advance. Super Mario World. We got the logo. And it's loading. And it's loading. And it's loading. It's gonna reset. Those are both bad. For Game Boy, I didn't mind it so much, but for Game Boy Advance, that looks terrible. Hey, this one didn't pull my save over. That's interesting. I guess that's part of the beta experience. It resets if you yank the cart. How interesting. I mean, I had to know. Let's try it again. Oh, I'm only recording in 30 FPS. I'm sorry. I messed that up. So, yeah, any um, jitter on the output or uh, dropped frames, that's my bad. So Game Boy Advance, it doesn't have to dump again. I guess it caches that. That's nice. I guess.
Alright, so this is weird playing this with a SNES controller and the wrong buttons, but nonetheless. It's also kind of difficult to play um, with so few frames. It is also not even just that it's dropping frames, but it seems like there's a decent amount of input lag. Or I guess not necessarily input lag, but just lag. Oh, I can't break that when I'm small, Mario. I think I'm able to play this level mostly just because of my familiarity with it. I think uh, if I was playing a level I wasn't familiar with, I'd be having a much more difficult time. I'm already having a hard enough time as is. It's playable. Give them that. Now I know the the fix for the fix for Game Boy Advance is uh, we just need to pull up the menu, which requires plugging in a keyboard. And since there's only one USB port, it means we also need a USB hub. And then once the keyboard's plugged in, you can literally just hit F1 on it, and you can access the menu. But save and quit. What I'm curious about now. We reset it. Is do I still have that save? And did it overwrite my cart? Because that would be disappointing, but I wouldn't be totally surprised. Yeah, I still have my save from. Hyperkin, let's see if my save itself is still intact. Yeah, see, my save on the cart is on World 3, not World 1. So, there's no right back to the cart still, uh, but it also didn't even read the cart in the first place. Let's try a few more things. Um, first, let us try a flash cart. Now, this is a single ROM cart with a, um, a Pokemon ROM hack flash to it. So, technically it should work, but the game on this cart is not going to be in any databases that this thing may or may not be reading from. So, who knows? It'll be interesting to find out, right? Um, but anything that can run Pokemon Crystal should be able to run this game. Despite the label, it is not crystal clear. Which is a fantastic ROM hack, but just not what I have on this cart. Hey, It does seem to work. How about that? This is Pokemon Gold version 1.0. This is that Space World ROM. And it pulled my save, so that's nice, I guess. Alright. Pleasantly surprised. We're going to try another flash cart. This one is Metroid Fusion. Normal ROM, but still curious. We're going to try a few more carts after this. certainly takes its time. I will say though, had that, if the emulation quality was better, this would be a uh, fantastic product. I'm 
The existing cart compatibility makes it a hard sell, though. Like, if it doesn't... If it doesn't write my saves back to the cart, what's what's the point of being able to read it off the cart in the first place? Also, if it's not even reading my saves for Game Boy Advance, which admittedly they do still say is a beta feature, but on the same note, this thing shouldn't have been released until it was done. Well, for those curious, power usage is actually pretty reasonable. It's a 5 volt adapter, but it's only pulling 120 milliamps. Well, it jumps up when it resets. Yeah, not bad. Okay, and my game works. Didn't pull the save on that either. Yeah, it's so weird how it resets. We'll have to figure out why it does that. Because I know it's not playing the game off the cart. But we're playing the game off the cart. Then it wouldn't reset when I do that. What's interesting is this cart doesn't even work in my Game Boy. But this thing read it no problem. Alright, let's try another Game Boy. I've got several on my desk. Wow, that's nuts. Okay, I guess not. Let's try one more game and see if we can pull the save off of that. Game Boy Advance game, that is. Interesting how some games take so much longer. I will say though, while this thing is going, because I love talking, I can't help it. Um, I'm actually pretty excited for what this thing might become eventually. Uh, where it's at right now, it's it's all right, I guess. Um, it definitely could be better. Could use some improvement. Uh, and and you know, I I do know that I have to try out the newer firmware because I know there was a new firmware that released while this thing was shipping to me. So it, it, there's just no chance it's on the newest firmware. But um, I'm excited for what this thing could be because. If nothing else, it is a really good interface between the carts and external storage, so you can dump your ROM, save your games. Uh, so if that sort of functionality does ever materialize where you can just put a card in, dump it, and then pull your ROM off the SD card, then you know it'll provide a good way for people to back up their, or to replace their save batteries and be able to back up their saves. Um, I think that'll require some sort of custom software on this thing. But from what I know about this thing so far, that that's likely possible. I will do a teardown in just a moment, and we'll see. We'll see what's really going on on the inside. All right. All right. All right. Hey, continue. I pulled my save from that. So it looks like it's kind of random as far as what saves it will pull. Now, I want to try this. I have a feeling it won't work, but I'm going to try it anyway. I got to know. So the cart I just plugged in, this is an AM3 movie cart. And it is uh, undumpable by other uh, cart dumpers. So I sincerely doubt 
this thing will be able to do anything with it, but I'm just curious as far as what it'll do. And since we're stuck on that Hyperkin screen, I'm guessing it is going to do absolutely nothing. Because that is the same screen we get when there is no cart inserted. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Well, that's a screen that we normally see when there's no cart inserted. There it goes. All right. Let us try two more things. First thing, we're going to try the aging ROM out of sheer curiosity. See if that works. Oh, so far so good. It's loading. I hold my L and R so I get into the menu. Check some error. Well, that's probably fine. Oh. Oh no, an error occurred. That's kind of to be expected. I don't think a lot of, I don't think most emulators can actually pass all those checks. It's a shame to see that it fails, but I'm not surprised. And it's not necessarily that it cannot do whatever operation the test cart was trying to do. It's more that this thing cannot do that operation in the expected time that it does it. You know, maybe it's running that operation too fast. It's not going to let me into the menu. Um, I think I would have to flash another cart. This is a modified ROM so that... Oh, is it? No, this isn't that cart. No, this should work. I don't know why it's not working. Oh well. It's not going to let me into that ROM though, so we can't do any of the screen tests or the um, button test or anything like that. None of the fun stuff. And what I just plugged in now is an EverDrive. I'm about 98% sure it won't work, but you know, curious as to what it will do. Based on that Hyperkin logo, though, I'm guessing what it will do is absolutely nothing. Which is a bit of a shame, because the low-profile nature of this thing actually means it works with um, low-profile carts. If for some reason you wanted to insert a half height cart, it would work, but since flash carts don't work in this thing, that's not going to work. Let's try one more thing though. I lied. I keep, I keep throwing things at it. I want to try. Two more things. Just kidding. I'm curious. I know you're curious too. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Whoops. Which means, this thing of course isn't going to work. Which is also a shame because of how ridiculous that looks. So technically this is dumpable. So maybe it'll dump and then start running the ROM. But... Also maybe not. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I know this is pointless because it's not actually interfacing with the e-reader itself, so any cards I swipe wouldn't be picked up by the system. Uh, this thing also does not have a link port on it, so we can't 
do any of that fun stuff either. But it's still a neat experiment, I guess. Oh, look at that. Oh no, an error has occurred. Wow, who would have ever guessed that it wouldn't be perfectly compatible. Okay, last thing. This is not Pokemon Gold, despite how much it looks like Pokemon Gold. This is a bootleg cart, a relatively high quality bootleg cart, uh, but it is also a multi-cart. So if it dumps, we'll probably just get a dump of the menu, but you know, again, curious. I wanna see how it responds. Does appear to dump. And do we just get the menu? We get the menu. Does it boot though? Nope. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Unfortunate as it is, that's how life goes. So the responsible thing to do from here would be to check out what sort of um, sort of firmware updates we can get going see if I can't get Game Boy Advance working properly and uh, try that out again but other people other people make YouTube videos they make some pretty good reviews I don't think I'm gonna find anything different from them but what I think I might find a little bit different is uh, excuse me as I butcher the English language um, I want to take it apart. I want to see what's inside this thing. Like I said, I haven't consumed that much media on this thing, but of the media that I have consumed, I haven't seen any teardowns. I'm going to start with the obvious screws, which is a Torx T8. Wait, is that a Torx or that's a hex? That's a hex. I'm going to use a Torx T8 anyway, because of who I am as a person. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to get the hex. That'll work much better than Torx. That is a 2. I don't know what 2 is. 2 millimeter? I'm going to assume there are not any screws hidden underneath the feet on the bottom because that would be redundant and redundant is expensive and if there's one thing I know about Hyperkin that like literally every other company they build things to a cost. All right. Ooh, that is off to a fantastic start. Right on the bottom here, we have this panel that slides out. And we have two big metal weights screwed in to make this thing feel more premium than it actually is. Next we have the front. I didn't even realize it, but this is a separate panel that slides out. We've got a couple of flat flex connectors. I'm going to unhook this one. So I can pull that out. We've got LEDs with a heat shrink, I'm guessing, to guide the light. Uh, there's a red one. I didn't even realize there was this one here. I'm guessing that's, well, it's actually clearly labeled read LED. And then this one is the power LED that is white. It indicates when it is on doing stuff. Two buttons, USB port, a couple of passives. Nothing fancy about this board. Ah, this is interesting. We have two more boards. I'm going to unhook that already. Because I know me. And I don't want to forget. That's not the right size. That's the right size. 
So we have four presumably Phillips screws, but I use JIS drivers anyway because once you go JIS, you don't go back. JIS drivers work in Phillips screws. Phillips drivers don't work so well in JIS screws. All right, so this is probably the main, the brains behind the device, seeing as how we have the HDMI port and the power port on the board. I see two memory modules and then this chip under a heat sink that is glued on with thermal adhesive, so I have no idea what's under there and I can't get that off without breaking it. So, sorry. But I know that is the fancy processing unit based off of all these differential traces there. Kinda neat, actually. Shame about the thermal adhesive, though. All I can tell you it's, is it's a BGA package. Um, actually, let me double check. Is that thermal adhesive or is it just gooped on there real good? That is thermal adhesive. Okay, yeah, that's not coming off. I don't want to break it. Just because I'm not satisfied with it doesn't mean I just break things. Um, I would like more information, but not at, not at that cost. At what cost, man? All right, four more, three more screws. That one's long gone. Not the ideal screwdriver for this. I should have switched before getting this deep, but here we are. All right, let me find that screw. Don't worry, it didn't go far. I'm just gonna leave them in this plastic guide here. So they'll be so much easier to insert. And that's all this is, just a plastic guide. There's nothing on the bottom. Or is there? Nope, there's nothing on the bottom. And then the cart reader itself, which I don't even have to take out of the housing. We can already see everything on there. There is a mystery chip under a blob of epoxy. And some test points on the back and that's pretty much it. Um, none of them are labeled. They are T1 through T54. So presumably we have one pad for each of the cart pins and then a few pads for programming this. But that's all I got. I have no idea what that is or how it even interfaces with the uh, main board. It could be, and this would actually be really interesting to see, if this was just a uh, USB-based reader hooking up to an internal USB port on this thing. And if this was something like a GBX clone, I think that would be very fascinating. One thing I'm curious about, let's see if they did this properly. That's how that goes, right? Yeah. So there is no physical detection, no limit switch, no nothing. So how this thing tells whether it has a Game Boy Advance or a Game Boy Color cart in there, I have no idea. I'm guessing it just tries to read the header, and if it fails, it tries again in Game Boy Advance mode, or vice versa. It tries in Game Boy mode, and then it tries again. 
But let us find out at the very least if it is sending five volts to my three volt only cart. Multimeter. Stick that on the ground. Stick that on the uh, voltage side. And here goes nothing. Oh, it's instantly sending at three volts. Oh. And then I slipped. All right, so let's, so I think that's actually the safe way to do it. Feed it three volts, try reading, see if you can read anything. And if so, keep doing that. If not, feed it five volts and try again. I think that's a better alternative than just feeding it five volts straight from the get-go. Admittedly, it is very difficult to do this with one hand. I'm struggling to even do it with two. Big chunk of flux on the reader. Now it's feeding at five volts, but I gotta reset it. Try it again. Yeah, it knows right away. That is so bizarre. I don't know how it's doing that. I would love to get more information on that. Oh, it's blue, not white, I'm sorry. The logo is white through the green case with the blue LED makes it look white. That is so bizarre. I think I need to do more investigation. Because I'm very curious as to how it does that. I gotta I gotta see it again. Hang on. I just I don't believe what I'm seeing. Five volts. That's nuts. And we're gonna just pull a card out. Nothing defaults to three volts. Interesting is it's three volts and not 3.3, .3, but close enough. Yeah. I don't, how does it know? What's super fascinating about this, that it just can detect what's plugged in there before even powering it. Um, that means that they figured out something that even Nintendo was struggling with. And I think that is super fascinating. Uh, for those that have no idea what the heck I'm talking about, I definitely should have unplugged that first. It's my bad. Um, the Game Boy Micro was originally supposed to have, not even the Game Boy Micro, the original Game Boy Advance was supposed to have electronic cart detection for um, differentiating Game Boy and Game Boy Advance carts. Uh, that didn't work, so they settled on a physical switch inside the console. Now, if you wanna play with yours, you have a flash card. 
There's actually some homebrew you can download that will switch your Game Boy Advance into Game Boy Color mode, and it'll allow you to boot carts um, with some of the extra firmware features that they had tried enabling for that mode, uh, like rotation, zoom. Uh, there are actually a few filters too. It's, it's super neat. I'll try and remember to throw a link in the description. If not, bug me, I'll go find it and throw it in the description then. Um, but it's actually really, really cool. But because it wasn't working reliably, allegedly, because it wasn't working reliably, they uh, scrapped it and opted for a physical switch instead. Now. I don't know what reliably means. I don't know if it's, you know, it just wasn't working with a handful of carts or like if the cart wasn't detected properly, it would send it the wrong voltages. I don't know. You'd have to ask the engineers who were working on this thing back in the late 90s. Is it a cool feature? Yeah, absolutely. How does it work? Who knows? But. Because Nintendo themselves had problems with it, this screw is just not going in. Um, it leads me to believe that there might be some undocumented issue with this that just no one has discovered yet. I'm That screw's not going in, but I'm not gonna worry about it because it seems mostly fine. I've already also completely forgotten the order in which this goes together. Luckily, it's not that complicated. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that some games just aren't working properly with this. Uh, now, I have not heard of, for example, if it fails to detect a Game Boy Advance game that you have inserted, or it detects it as Game Boy Color for some reason, I've never heard of 5 volts being sent to a Game Boy Advance cart and like actually messing up the cart. Sure, it's not it's not good for the cart and I'm saying don't do it. But if it does happen, I have not heard of any issues with that. Now, if you do that all the time, it's probably going to mean lower lifespan for your cart, but if you just do it once or twice, you know, it's probably fine but also if your cart isn't being detected properly that's probably another issue anyway where, where was I going with that totally lost my train of thought nonetheless super neat feature I would love to know more about how it works unfortunately I'm not willing to sacrifice this thing to the cause and try taking it apart to find out more. Does that go both ways? I know one side is not rounded, but I mean, I guess it does. If you wanted to, you can make it work. I don't know why you would, because one side's got a point to it. All right, well, that's that. I guess now I'm going to futz about with the firmware and see if I can't get this thing working a little bit better. But that being said, my conclusion of this thing, this is an awesome concept, but as is, the implementation makes it, in my opinion, basically pointless. If you want to play Game Boy Advance games on your TV, um, there are better ways to do it, namely the GameCube and the Game Boy Player. Uh, you could also build yourself a GBA HD console 
Uh, it involves getting one of these bad boys. This is Spartan Edge Accelerator Board, but notice USB-C and HDMI outputs on it. It does pretty much what you'd expect. The benefit of a setup like that is you would be able to read off your real carts in real time. You don't have to wait for it to dump. You don't have to wait for any of that nonsense. You don't have to worry about any emulation settings. It just works. Um, you can also use it with Maybe not this. I don't think it. Act, I, I think that actually has compatibility problems with this AM3 movie card. But it would work with this, uh, an EverDrive, or a multi cart, um, or just about anything else that a Game Boy Advance works with. And it actually writes the saves back to the cart rather than just putting them on this micro SD. Now, could this improve in the future? Yeah. It, probably will. It'll probably get real better, uh, or significantly better within the next couple weeks. By the time I get this video published, the issues that I have with this thing could be already long fixed. So, do I recommend it right now? No, not, not really. But, it is cool, and I would like to see them improve it. Especially, this is... This is ridiculous. I think when I posed the question in the first place, is this the output of the video signal or, you know, what is this? I was expecting it to be pillar boxed, like it's sending 1920 by 1080 pixels, but the actual game screen is the proper resolution, um, or at least proper aspect ratio, not just stretch to fill. I guess that is the uh, least common denominator. Most people just want to fill their screen. And then 4 to 3 is the easy option because it looks close enough to what it should be. Game Boy Advance games should be 3 to 2. And original Game Boy games are some weird custom resolution that is close to 1 to 1. Um, not quite, but close enough. But, I don't know. I like it, but there's better options. Um, I I guess I'll still throw a link to this thing because the controller's fantastic. I'm digging the controller. And like I said, I'm sure they'll get it fixed eventually. Um, but use your judgment. I think there's better options out there, especially for the price. But tight. All right, quick addendum. Excuse the uh, shaky cam. Uh, I updated the firmware, but I don't know what that really did. I also have my keyboard here because I was plugging it in to mess with the settings because you have to have a device that you can literally hit F1 on, and this controller has no F1 button. So using that so I could change the settings, and once you disable the frame skip, turns out Game Boy Advance emulation works perfectly fine. Um, I'll link to more information in, in the description. But anyway, I plugged it straight into my monitor, and I'm sorry, but we're just going to capture my monitor. You can see, try playing with one hand how much smoother that's running compared to before. Now, part of before, I was capturing in a uh, wrong in the wrong frame rate but also before it was just lag oh that was you, you'll forgive me I'm playing one-handed it's kind of difficult but look at how much smoother that is Ooh. yeah anyway my inability to play Mario aside the firmware still won't read my save so I am still stuck on world one is what it is but with frame skip disabled Game Boy Advance is much more playable and that lag that I was seeing in frame dropping was literally just a result of OBS running it in uh, in 30 FPS and I wasn't paying attention but there you go the more you know and I don't have any speakers plugged into my monitor or there would be sound but it is what it is anyway thanks for watching